Ready? Oh, good. <laughs> Hello, this is uh, Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. And I'm Joe Barnhart. And I am Shawnee Castillo-Rios. Uh, we want you to know that if you don't believe in God, you are not alone. Right here in East Tennessee, you can find free-thinking atheists and agnostics. This is a show for them and for the people committed to a life rooted in science and unfettered by supernatural beliefs. And we've got a program today. I hope you can contribute with us on the reproductive issue. And our topic is the social womb. Uh, but now we want to tell viewers about the show's sponsors. Okay. RET, Rationalists of East Tennessee, Adopt a Highway Pickup in July, uh, hot but eight intrepid volunteers came and cleaned up our stretch of highway near, where is PSTCC? <laughs> uh, Pellissippi State. That's Hardin Valley Campus, thanks, volunteers. Right. And the next pickup will be in October. And, and anytime RET has a trash pickup, it is along a stretch of Pellissippi. Uh, they meet at the Burger King uh, right there okay. at Lovell Road and uh, right as you get on to Pellissippi. Um, but also let's, let's mention the Atheist Society of Knoxville. The Atheist Society of Knoxville frequently has a fun meetup at a bar or eatery. Tonight's meetup is at West Hills Flats and Taps at 7403 Kingston Pike here in Knoxville. Uh -huh. When you go to the meetup, just look for the silver, silver jacketed copy of the God Delusion standing up right on the table, or honestly just look for the large group of loud people. <laughs> Uh, and as Matt Dillahunty at the Atheist Experience says, everyone is welcome to our happy hour for food, fun, drink, conversation. But if you plan to preach, proselytize, provoke, <laughs> or punch, please don't. Please don't. Okay. Now, I think your pages are different from mine. I, I think so. Would you like to go on with yeah. Rationalists? Yeah, the Rationalists of East Tennessee have several regular monthly meetings, the first and third Sunday mornings of the month are usually lectures with lively roundtable discussion. Mm -hmm. The second Sunday, we hold the Skeptics Book Club on the fourth Sunday, if it's a mix-up, <laughs> sometimes with a potluck get-together uh, in, in a home of a, of a member, and that's a reflection meeting. And later in the show, we'll give you websites and additional details including times and locations. Right. And uh, forgive us right now, our uh, scripts are two-sided. Um, so in the news, mm -hmm. Joe has already covered the Adopt-A-Highway. Once again, Rationalists of East Tennessee has a section of Adopt-A-Highway, and we appreciate anyone that would like to come out, suffer through the rain, the heat. Uh, if it is a weather day, it does get rescheduled, such as uh -huh. snow. Uh -huh. And more into the news. Uh, several of you are very aware of what just happened this recent week with the Knoxville Police Department and the plaque that was hanging up. The Freedom from Religion Foundation East Tennessee chapter was presented with this in February. Uh, individuals were taken into a private officer-only door and saw this plaque, reported it. Um, emails went out to the mayor's office, uh, the police department, repeatedly and repeatedly and finally in early July they sent a generic we will look into it letter. At this point, you know, how much longer do we give the city and KPD to hold up the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution? Uh, so at that point we go into we're just going to turn it over to the attorneys at the FFRF and once they found out about that uh, they decided to actually take action. Uh, now it is a plaque it keeps being called a plaque, and the first definition of a plaque is an ornamental tablet, typical of metal, porcelain, or wood mm -hmm. that is fixed to a wall or other surface in commemoration of a person or event. Definition number two, a sticky deposit on teeth in which bacteria proliferates. Viewers can combine these definitions as maybe a sticky tablet or a tablet fixed to a wall or other surface mm -hmm. and from which an air of pretentious pride proliferates and a Christian privilege is asserted. Because that's exactly what happened here. There were no other religious plaques. There were no secular quotes. It was this one uh, quote of Romans 8.31, which is, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? Okay. 
Now, where do I come in on this? Wherever you would like to, Well, Joe. I'm, these are all mixed up. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> okay. uh, we can paraphrase Ben Franklin right now. Uh, when a religion is good, I conceive it will support itself. And when it does not support itself, and God does not take care to support it, so that it profess or its professors are obliged to call for the help of the civil power or taxpayer-funded police department, tis a sign I apprehend if it's being a bad one. Now, most policemen I've met know what the First Amendment is about, mm -hmm. and they've been very helpful, as a matter of fact, over the years. I'm 85. I've had good relationship mm -hmm. with the police on a number of occasions, and even when I was working in the restaurant here in town, mm -hmm. one of my best customers <laughs> was a policeman. Right. And uh, he was very helpful. I was a teenage boy, and he very helpful to me. So. Right, and th this isn't an attack against um, our city's yeah. officers. They do a really good job. It's just uh, it's, at this point, what the First Amendment's about. and yeah. Right, and if you can't uphold the first law of our Constitution, then what are you actually doing? Um, I think with me personally, the outrage against this has been extremely disturbing because this is the First Amendment of the United States of America. You don't get to omit that or bypass that because it offends you. No. Um, you no, know, no, saying no. that the Constitution isn't, isn't worthy of being respected offends me. Well, most law officers know that. I mean, mm -hmm. they, I mean they were, after all, upholding the law. Right, yeah. And, and that's what this is all about. The mayor did a really good job. Um, Chief Roush, I love Chief Roush, but in the press conference, yeah. I will say that if I was a non-Christian officer working under him, I would not feel comfortable with the way he used it to grandstand and push his religious belief. Um, but he is an individual, and yeah, as well. long as he is respecting the law, then then that's fine. Uh, petitions have started. I think right. the last I saw, there's 800 signatures to get the plaque back up. The plaque was never taken down. It was moved to an inspiration hall where other religious quotes good, are supposed good, to be good. hung. Yeah. I know somebody's handing out wristbands for the officers. Good for them. I wear a wristband, too. Mine has the establishment clause on it. Um, and officers are allowed to wear those things. That, then that's just fine. So what's today's program? The social womb. And okay, my uterus. the social womb. <laughs> okay. Let's get into what is the social womb we're talking about. All right. You can go ahead. We're, we're dealing with, uh, what do we call it, reproductive rights. Correct. And... Um, what we're trying to do is develop a theory. It takes, as it were, two wombs to create a person. It takes a physical womb of the woman. Mm -hmm. uh, without that, you don't have a person. All right. But it's a wound is necessary. Uh, the, the, the maternal womb is necessary but not sufficient. It takes the social womb also then, after the maternal womb, womb has done its job, then the social room, where the mothers and the fathers and aunts and uncles and cousins and teachers and the police <laughs> all it, help. It takes a village to raise a child. Yeah, it takes a village to raise a child. And, and uh, use the analogy, for example, uh, growing a flower. Mm -hmm. If you put a seed in a cup and put it then in a closet, you're not going to have a flower. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is a fetus alone just alone is not a person. There are stages that it takes that are necessary for making a person. Now, a fetus is human. It's not a giraffe. Correct. The male seed is human, but it's still just a stage. Mm -hmm. It takes an awful lot, many stages, to turn into a person. Now, when a new dog comes in, you know, a pup, Mm -hmm. Pretty soon they're walking, right? And the, and the colt is, can get up and walk. Mm -hmm. But human beings, in many ways, because there's so much we have to do, it takes a long, long time mm -hmm. to be a person, and it takes language. Now, most of us know we are not born with a conscience. Correct. And uh, some people never de develop one. <laughs> exactly. And, and they're called sociopaths. Or well, our president right now. Well, no, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> I, I don't want to get into this. <laughs> but a sociopath simply did not develop a conscience. Mm -hmm. But most human beings do. Correct. But this happens 
after the child is born. And what I'm suggesting on this question of reproductive rights is we are not persons until we are developed and grown as a person in the social womb. Mm -hmm. We are not rational in the womb. <laughs> no, we are absolutely not. <laughs> and we are gradually becoming rational. It's very interesting that when you raise a child, they will catch you with incons inconsistency. That's mm -hmm. good. Yes. Because that means they are thinking. Mm -hmm. And we taught them that. <laughs> yeah. And even if they catch us with inconsistency, that's good because all of us need correcting in the first place. <laughs> Absolutely. So what we're suggesting then, that um, the, the reproductive right is the woman's right, and, uh, and to call her a criminal, for example, that there are some who want to put women in prison uh, if they have <laughs> an abortion. Right, to which I say, if you consider abortion murder, then miscarriage is manslaughter. It, it, you cannot take one and separate it from the other. I mean, the very technical definition of a yeah. miscarriage is spontaneous abortion. Um, and the definition of manslaughter is the murder of someone or the death of someone without intent. Well, that seed of a flower is not a flower. Correct. Because it takes watering. It, it takes weather and sunshine and minerals in mm -hmm. the soil. Without that, it would not be a flower. The same with a fetus. Without all the, n the nurturing that a mother and a father and relatives do after birth, it would not turn into a person. I mean, even if you're using the, the seed analogy, uh -huh. the seed is the fertilized egg mm -hmm. in utero. Mm -hmm. You can't even begin to classify that fetus as a person until it has gone through the stages, the woman's womb, oh, yeah. and and yeah. our uterus, and grown mm -hmm. and gone through the the development or the de developmental stages. Um, yeah, even in religion, they've had a big debate over um, infant baptism and believers' baptism. Mm -hmm. Now, the believers' baptism says you. You, could, you should not be baptized until you reach the age of accountability and make a decision pro or con on religion. If, on this particular religion, if you make it con, for, then you can be baptized, but mm -hmm. only then. <laughs> and the, the, uh, what I'm, my point is, even there, there's a recognition of stages after birth. Right. Conscience takes time, and that's why the mother especially the mother, because she, she's there most of the time, is actually nurturing and helping to create a conscience, which is right from wrong. Mm -hmm. You aren't born knowing right from wrong. Right. In fact, you aren't making any statements at all. You're crying. Right. <laughs> You're saying, you feed me, take care of me. This is what I need right now, and I can't communicate it. So all of this takes time and stages. Mm -hmm. And so to, uh, well, here's an interesting question. If a, if a four-year-old child steals, mm -hmm. would you put a four-year-old child in jail? Not in my no. opinion, you should. Well, you, of course you shouldn't. Right. The point is even there, even though he's already a person, mm -hmm we know that his conscience is still not as developed as it should be. Right. And we then have to nurture and cultivate this. And that's why the social womb is as important as the maternal womb. Mm -hmm. now, without a maternal womb, you wouldn't have a person. Right. But without the social womb, you wouldn't have a person either. Right. I mean, you could, you could consider them a person, but they still... You treat them as if they were per as as much as possible, mm -hmm. so that they can, that's the way they become persons. Mm -hmm. You talk to a child, you don't expect them to say, well, I agree with you the on point one, two, and three, <laughs> because they're still infants. Right. But that's the way they become persons, is treating them that way. Right. And that's why we call it patience. 
and, and educating them and walking them through. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you cannot compare a fetus to not a, a person. No, they're not a right. person. Yeah, they, they're a potential person. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you could be a potential millionaire, but right. that won't impress a bank. No. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you figure out a way to, will you please let me know? <laughs> um, so, so would you like to discuss um, actual versus potential? Well, we, most people understand what that means. Uh, you be a, you can be an actual uh, basketball player, mm -hmm. but uh, you have to get out there and practice. You learn how to dribble, <laughs> right? <laughs> learn how to pass, and, you, and it takes time. In other words, what we're suggesting is there are stages, mm -hmm. and personhood takes cha stages. And uh, therefore, I think the, the, the claim that Abortion, abortion is a murder is simply failing to recognize that there's more to being a person mm -hmm. than they obviously are recognizing. Right. And In fact, there are some religions that are even opposed birth control. <laughs> yes, the, the Catholic religion has been well, famous that, for that. Um, now that's modified, I'm thinking, well, Catholic people. Yes. Uh, modified quite a bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, something interesting that that we have run across is mm -hmm. uh, it's voice of a man versus voice of a woman. And oh. actually, we'll hold on just a second. We do have our first caller. Okay, we got a caller. Go ahead. It's Charles from Central Illinois. Go ahead. Good to hear from you. Yeah. You're discussing a concept called uh, the social womb and the social contract. Uh huh. Well, throughout history, uh, Societies have had different views of what childhood is and isn't, and when life begins, begins, and when life doesn't begin. Mm -hmm. For instance, in uh, colonial times of America, around, say, 1650 to 1750, and even in uh, the parts of Europe, uh, mm -hmm. the woman did not consider... Many women did not consider the the unborn child, the fetus, to be actually alive until it, they, they what they called quicken. Quicken, mm -hmm. yes. Uh -huh. That's when they felt the uh, the first the movement. movements of the fetus. Okay. Uh huh. That's that's a good point. Actually, and, uh, go ahead. And in uh, earlier times, there were times where um, mm -hmm. they didn't consider the child to be viable even after birth until 45 days mm -hmm, mm -hmm. afterwards as I understand it does yes, so in the Bible yeah. in the uh, Old Testament mm -hmm. so the social contract and the social womb have uh, changing views on what is and isn't a viable child of viable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. patients and so forth and um, so societies uh, views differ. Even in with the so-called uh, the United States, we have extensive different views on women and women isn't uh, a viable child and uh, and so forth. But what we can never escape is our own human uh, identity. We 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 are a social species. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. We interact, yeah. Yeah, uh, interact together. You know, three men can figure out a way to take care of a significant problem, such as uh, that damn lion that's been preying on us. We can figure out a way to kill it versus one person who would have a really, really hard time to do so. Exactly, yeah. It's a te teamwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've always been a... Uh, social species in that regard mm -hmm. you know even our pre uh, modern ancestors lived and worked together in social groups yeah I, I regard myself very lucky to have had so many good aunts and uncles mm -hmm. and my mother had enough sense to recognize she had a lot of help right <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, we had good neighbors in fact we were not permitted to play indoors Mm -hmm. And so I, that was one reason I was went 12 years without missing a day in school. I was so healthy. But we had good neighbors. Or 
watching each mm -hmm. other's kids, you know. And that was a neighborhood uh, vigil. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, the, the parents are involved, uh, the community's involved. And our, uh, that's our communities, that's what our caller is suggesting. is we, Right. The community is mm -hmm. bringing this personhood into being. Right. And that's stages. Now, we have to admit, a seed, a sperm cell is life. It's not a pebble. Correct. And it's human. It's not a giraffe. But it, we're distinguishing personhood mm -hmm. from just life. All right. Just like, uh, you know, once you combine the sperm and the egg, that's still not a person. That is a... Time, yeah. Right. Correct. Well, thank you for calling in, Charles. We really appreciate your input on this. Yes. Yeah, okay. Have a good day. Oh, thank thanks you, Thanks again. <laughs> you know, I like the way he calls. Okay, now. So, uh, since it got brought up with the contract. Um, Social contract. Uh -huh. Something that we ran across is voices of a man versus voices of a woman. Uh -huh. uh, so, <laughs> voices of a man. And this does say a libertarian assertion. I'm not sure that that's quite correct, but we'll go with that. Uh -huh. So, voice of a man. I would argue that if the pregnancy is an agreement between a husband and wife and the woman later decides to end the pregnancy, then civil law would prevail. A contract has been made. If there is no legal reason for breaking the contract, birth defect, health of the mother, divorce, etc., the husband could seek damages up to and perhaps including specific performance. The husband on that view. Right. So, <laughs> you can voice of a woman, here's the counter. Just out of curiosity, what is the man's side of the contract? It seems pretty one-sided to me if the man has equal control when the woman takes all of the physical risks, goes through all of the discomfort and pain, and is likely to end up with the lion's share of caregiving, at least for the first few months or years, particularly if she breastfeeds. Let's think about, or let's think of the ability to make a baby as a business. I have access to the means of reproduction, and my husband, husband does not. He only has one of the raw materials my factory needs. I own the factory. Yes, I own this. Mm -hmm. My husband has one of, and where is the other page? My goodness. Well, anyhow. <laughs> one of the three raw ideas. materials. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. One of the three mater raw materials I need. Mm -hmm. Sperm. I have the others, an egg and a uterus. My husband has to contribute a single sperm, which can take as little as a few enjoyable minutes, and I've got to contribute months of time, excuse me, healthy living, if I'm conscientious, uh -huh. discomfort, and potentially painful delivery and recovery. If we had to put dollar value on these contributions to baby making, my contribution would be worth exponentially more than my husband's. So if I were to negotiate a contract for baby making, I would con retain control of the situation. I can pick up sperm at a sperm bank for a couple of hundred bucks or get it for free with very little effort. Meanwhile, it would cost tens of thousands of dollars for my husband to rent a baby factory, in quotes, or hire a surrogate mother. If you think about his raw materials, wide availability, and relatively low cost, it is hard, or hardly a huge bargaining tool during contract negotiations. His only real bargaining tool during contract negotiations is my love for him and desire to continue our relationship. Mm -hmm. I think that it would be f more than fair if my husband, of my husband to divorce me if I opted out of a planned pregnancy. Our relationship is the currency that he has paid for our baby. So if I don't provide the promised baby, he can deny me the relationship. However, I would not agree to any contract that would give him the right to control my baby factory because I wouldn't give away my right to control my own body even to him. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't be on the negotiating table. And luckily, I have enough power over reproduction that I get to take it off the table and he just has to accept that or walk away from the table. I find any attempt by men to control someone else's uterus an attempt to co-opt control of the means of production that they have no right to. Women have a natural monopoly over reproduction, and I think that that really bothers some men. Their discomfort with their level or their lack of control over reproduction manifests itself uh -huh. in an attempt to maneuver themselves into a more powerful position. Maybe it isn't fair that men are relatively powerless to control reproduction, but a man's control of reproduction ends at orgasm. He has every right to hold on to his sperm, but once he gives it away, his part in reproduction is finished. 
and so is his control over what happens. He gets nearly all of the perks of that arrangement, and he has no right to get together with his buddies and decide that there is some unspoken contract that all women agreed to at conception that gives men rights to control that what women do with sperm that has been given away. If anything, that contract needs to be negotiated couple by couple. Women as a group have mm -hmm. given away their power over production for so long that many modern men seem a bit shocked that some of us feel we have the right or any right to this power over our uteruses. I do consider my uterus mine and only mine to control. And even though I love a man, I'm not going to give away my control. So that's that's the voice of a woman in rebuttal to that contract. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, in most marriages, uh, men, I think, can recognize this. And the women recognize that uh, it's a an interactive I mean that's what marriage is mm -hmm. it's a uh, partnership yeah a, a womb has to have nourishment and food and sleep so uh, th and that's where the male comes in too so it's for this is why communication between between the husband and the wife are absolutely essential mm -hmm. and I would agree with you if the two disagree then it's the woman's decision mm -hmm. on that. I mean, that, that seemed to me to be, to be obvious. Well, I mean, I was married now, years and years ago, uh -huh. got pregnant, contraception failure, and I immediately knew that I was going to have an abortion. Uh -huh. My ex-husband, who had three children and a grandchild already, uh, wanted to argue that he wanted to keep it. Uh -huh. And I flat out said, my body, you have no control. He was supportive in that, whether he liked it or not, went, paid for half of the abortion, mm -hmm. took care of me afterwards, and everything was good. But, but this idea that men get to decide yeah, that's, what goes on with my body and with women's bodies is not okay. No, 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 that, that, um, hopefully well, you have a relationship well, where the, you can communicate and give the man a position to, yeah, to sure. say, yes, I will be a 50-50 partner in this. If you ch if you choose to keep and go well, the, full time, the assumption you're making, which I agree with, is the woman is a person. Yes. And so that's, that's such it. that's it, this is 2017, and it's still such a, a it, radical concept. That it's interesting to watch some of the old cowboy movies, mm -hmm. how women are treated like objects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in other words, they're treated almost in some of these cowboy movies like horses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my woman. <laughs> yeah, and that goes into... Uh, okay, we've got a phone call. Let's see. Go ahead. Our phone caller. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Good and loud. I agree that... I strongly agree that women should be autonomous. Uh -huh. Women's reproduction uh, choices should be autonomous. Uh -huh. and, but... Um, Many state legislations and elements of the federal government are doing their dead level best to uh -huh. limit those reproductive rights and take the reproductive autonomy of women away. And they're doing it as hard and as fast as they can. Um, I like your thoughts on... Uh, on this current activity. Well, one reason they, one way they're trying to do this is trying to define a fetus as a person. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, for their point of view, they haven't given any arguments on this. They haven't even gotten into it because, uh, for one thing, they don't seem to have done a lot of thinking on that particular area. Right, and when you present them with the science, they yeah. They're completely scientifically illiterate. But most well, men, most men that I, I've talked with on this, of course, would agree with the women on it's their bodies. And but no, let's go to the caller again. Go ahead. Um, the the reason that the that the legislators I'm familiar legislators I'm familiar with have given are uh, uh, the fetal heartbeat. Uh, 20 weeks of uh, pregnancy means the fetus is viable outside the body, and those are the reasons they give, and those, are the, and those have been the foundations 
of the laws that have passed in the state of Tennessee and mm-hmm. other states. The 20-week is the 20-week quote-unquote rule uh, has been implemented in several states, uh-huh. and they banned late-term abortions based on that 20-week. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that, that, that 20 week law, too, is so ridiculous because very few abortions actually occur after 20 weeks. This is, it's a BS law used well, to oppress and regulate women. And that, basically, it it's pretty arbitrary. A heartbeat is not enough to be a person. Right. I mean, now, dogs have heartbeat. <laughs> right, and, and talking about bodily autonomy, um, I know a lot of people have, have seen this if you're on social media at all. Uh, there's a, a meme that's been going around, and it explains it so perfectly, and it goes into, you know, you can relate it to the heartbeat and and whatnot uh, and brain activity. Um, but our, our, our speaker, I mean, our caller had something else. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, it, um, uh-huh. um, I just wanted to say that uh-huh. uh, some women who have needed abortions after 20 weeks uh-huh. have not been able to get them, them. have carried dead fetuses to Mm -hmm. term. Right. Mm -hmm. This is horrifying. It is. Yes, it is. It's it's deplorable. It's, this will get me on a massive rant. Um, We're not your incubators. You don't get to tell us that, and somebody that needs an abortion, like medically needs an abortion after 20 weeks, they chose to have a child at that point and to force them to carry the dead fetus that they wanted is mm. unimaginable to me. You are, you have created, you've turned them into, you've gone beyond the incubator and turned them into a coffin at that point. Okay, now here's something that the, the anti-abortion people have come up with, is it's a, uh, they, they regard uh, abortion as murder. Mm. Now, I remember talking to one, I said, now, here's a mother with four children and uh, she decides that that's enough, but she's pregnant and, and she then has an abortion. On your view, this woman should be either, this mother of four kids should either be imprisoned for the rest of her life or executed. Is that the kind of person you are? Uh, we didn't have a very good discussion after that. Yeah, that's, that would never be um, a a good discussion with me when somebody actually thinks that That someone having an abortion uh, needs to go to prison. When they they call it murder, that's what they're implying. Yeah, it absolutely is. And they take, in other words, they take this mother away from those children she's nurturing, Mm -hmm. put her in prison or execute her. Right. And again, if abortion is murder, miscarriage is manslaughter, you can't treat them any separately. A fetus is a fetus Mm -hmm. until it is legally viable. And legally viable doesn't happen until third trimester. Um, but, caller, did you have anything else for us? Um, I just wanted to make one point. Uh-huh. I think a lot of uh, um, men, of course, don't have any point of reference, so I don't think they should have a vote in this. But I think um, many women either didn't live through the time when there was no birth control that was reliable and there were no legal abortions mm-hmm. and the horrors that that promulgated they don't either they don't remember or they don't or they don't know anyone who went through something like that let me give you a personal thing see what you think when i was a kid i read a book by john r rice a baptist fundamentalist who argued against birth control now this is <laughs> i mean Most Baptist preachers wouldn't do that today. Fortunately, in high school, I had a health teacher who was a woman, and she presented another perspective Mm -hmm. on life, and uh, it educated me. And my wife was very happy to learn that. (laughs) As a matter of (laughs) fact, we began worrying about the fact that there were so many children born that had not been taken care of. Mm-hmm. Right. So we decided we would adopt. Uh, I didn't think it was so imperative that a kid have to, would have to look like me in order to be a kid. Right. <laughs> and so we adopted. 
And uh, because I, I had once visited a, a, a home where kids were taken care of, mm -hmm. and it seemed to me that they would have been much better off had they had children, had parents, yeah. and aunts and uncles and cousins. And the, the social womb. And nurture, yeah, yeah, the social yeah. womb is what they needed. No, absolutely. Um, we do need to take a program break real quick and a sponsor break. Thank you so much, caller, for calling in. Yes. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for talking to me. Thank I appreciate you. it. Now, in case you are just turning in, or tuning in, this is Free Thought Forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and Rationalists of East Tennessee. Free Thought Forum is funded jointly by them and by individual contributions. Now, the shows are lively, at least we hope they are, <laughs> and most every Tuesday from 5 to 5.55 p.m. Eastern Time here in Knoxville uh, and on, in the community area on Access Television Channel 12 and uh, channel 194 depending on your local cable network so tell your friends about this program it streamlining on ctv knox knox dot org right you i mean you can watch live online at ctv knox dot org um, and today's show is live today is mm -hmm. august the first and you can call in on the number on our screen and speak with us like callers already have while we take a short break, please watch these informative videos about our sponsors. Do you find stories of talking snakes laughable? Do you prefer the scientific method over supernatural beliefs? Are you yes. concerned about religious leaders and organizations imposing their values and rules on your body, your family, and the rest of our society? Well, take comfort in the fact that you're not alone. The Rationalists of East Tennessee meets weekly for fellowship and provides a forum for people who support skeptical thinking and rational discussion of these and other issues. To find out more information or to find out about our next meeting, visit us on the web at www.rationalist.org. If you live in or around the Knoxville area and are questioning your religious beliefs or simply believe in one less God than everyone else, well, you're not alone. The Atheist Society of Knoxville is a fun and friendly group of people just like you that meets twice a week at a bar or restaurant. We meet every Tuesday night following the show at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria for happy hour. You'll find our group either inside or on the patio. Look for Richard Dawkins' silver-jacketed book, The God Delusion, standing upright on the table. On Fridays, we meet at Agave Azul or the Beard and Beer Market. But if you plan to preach, proselytize, provoke or punch, please don't. We all question what we believe at one point in our lives. If this is the time for you, come join us for food, drink, conversation, and fun. So where are we? Okay. All right. And the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK as we like to call it, meets uh, one or two times a week. We have evening meetups for food, fun, drink, and conversation. Mm -hmm. Find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org, atheist with an S. The purpose of ASK is to supply a venue for co community, camaraderie, and outreach to atheists, agnostics, free thinkers, and other like-minded persons in the East Tennessee area. Our Tuesday meeting is going on right now at West Hills Flats and Taps at uh -huh. 7403 Kingston Pike here in Knoxville right across from West Town Mall. Uh-huh. And the first Sunday of August, uh, it's the first Sunday of August at 10.30 a.m. is a, uh, at uh, what, Goins Cafeteria mm -hmm. and at Pellissippi State Community College. And what's this? Vikram Singh. A research center. And what's it about? Uh, he's a graduate research assistant, and he will be discussing, uh, or in astrophysics, and he will be discussing black holes. Black holes, mm -hmm. oh, good. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. And the second Sunday is what? The second Sunday um, of most months is Rationalists of East Tennessee's Skeptic Book Club. Uh, the book for August is The Hidden Life of Trees, What They Feel and How They Communicate, by Peter, and I hope I pronounced this correct correctly, Wollobin. Mm -hmm. um, they meet on... They'll meet on Sunday the 13th at uh -huh. 2 p.m. at Books A Million in West Knoxville. You can visit rationalist.org to find the rest of the calendar books for the rest of the year. Uh -huh. And again, Books A Million is at 8513 Kingston Pike here in Knoxville. And one thing, too, we've brought up uh, the contract and a woman's body and bodily autonomy. That's one thing that a lot of 
I like to call them anti-choicers or anti-women. Um, they're not pro-life, they're pro-birth in my opinion. Um, but they neglect to see. And if you're on social media, you've probably you know, seen this meme that goes around and it, it's a beautiful uh, example of why we should be allowed to choose what happens with our body. My body, my choice only makes sense when someone else's life isn't at stake. That's what the anti-abortion crew <laughs> likes to say. But here's a fun fact. If my younger sister was in a car accident and desperately needed a blood transfusion to live, and I was the only person on earth who could donate blood to save her, and even though donating blood is relatively easy, safe, and quick procedure, no one can force me to give blood. Yes, even to save the life of a fully grown person, it would be illegal to force me to donate blood if I didn't want to. See, we have this concept called bodily autonomy. It's this cultural notion that a person's control over their body is above all important and must not be infringed upon. Like we can't even take life-saving organs from corpses, deceased people, unless the person whose corpse it is gave consent before their death. Even corpses get bodily autonomy. To tell people they must sacrifice their bodily autonomy for nine months against their will is an incredibly expensive, invasive, and difficult procedure to save what you view as another human life, a debatable claim in the early stages of pregnancy when the vast majority of abortions are performed mm -hmm. and is desperately unethical. You can't even ask people to sacrifice bodily autonomy to give up or organs they aren't using anymore after they've died without their permission. Okay, let me try the devil's advocate and see what happens. All right. Is a um, fetus a body? Yes. Is that body autonomy? It does not have bodily autonomy. <laughs> it cannot now, support itself. So the real issue is personhood. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Now, as far as we know, persons <laughs> in our kind of culture, you have to have a body to, to be a person. Mm -hmm. Now, so a body is not sufficient to be a person. Right. It has to be a vital body. Now, what we're trying to argue is the social womb is what helps create a person. Mm -hmm. Without the maternal womb, you wouldn't, e ha wouldn't even have the body to start with. Right. But that's why mother motherly care continues after birth. And paternal care. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my brother broke his nose, mm -hmm. my tough Texas father cried. <laughs> <laughs> Here's this tough boxer. Uh -huh. I mean, he was a, just a rough guy, but he had a tender heart. Mm -hmm. And and I remember his singing to my sister. Now, what I'm saying is both mother and father and cousin and neighbors all are part of this social womb to take this newborn mm -hmm. who's not yet a person. Mm -hmm. It's a human being. It's not a a, a camel or <laughs> or a giraffe, but it's still needing all the input, mm -hmm. all the feeding, both the physical feeding and the emotional mm -hmm. feeding. And that's why when you have a newborn, you hold it and you rub it and stroke it. That that partly affects the brain itself, mm -hmm. and uh, even a cat. I have a cat that comes in my lap. I, I sometimes wonder if it likes the fact that I'm in a rocking chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I rock this cat, and it keeps coming mm -hmm. to me. Now, why? I don't think I have all that pleasurable personality. <laughs> but here is this cat has to have a social contact. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm trying to study, <laughs> sometimes this cat comes in. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because I think it feels that, well, if I'll stroke it, stroke it a little bit and just a little teddy, it's meaningful mm -hmm. to the cat. Well, what we're suggesting that is the social womb is all of that attention and affection and love and care that turns the newborn into a person. Right. So all you mothers and others out there, nurses, doctors, are helping. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I'll say a word for uncles. I had an uncle 
would cross his leg when I was a little kid mm -hmm. and put me on his foot uh -huh. and rock me. And, and I the, thought I was going the on little to, horsey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's it's very essential to have um, the community. Oh yeah, yeah. Involved in in raising a child, and you cannot equate a fetus to a child. You can't do it. No, it, no it's, it's not. Just, it's, it's not, not acceptable. It's necessary, in any form but not fashion. sufficient. Right, and when you get into fetal development too, a lot of people argue, oh, well, it has a heartbeat, it has brain activity. Up until the third trimester, it can't even sense pain. Yeah. The. But a dog can sense pain, but it's not a person. A frog right. can sense pain, apparently, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot more to make a person. Right. And that's why we use the word social womb. That's, that's why the teachers are so important. Mm -hmm. It's there. Yeah, and I think one of the arguments, too, is maybe the people that are against women having rights to their own bodies need to start focusing on children that have already been born and being a productive part of that social womb exactly. instead of being pro-forced birth and then stepping away saying, well, you shouldn't have got pregnant. I'm not going to pay for your kid. I'm the not going to pay for food. I'm not going to pay for... Once the kid is here, you have an obligation. Done. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's one of the bigger problems, too, that we see from, from the pro-life uh, mm -hmm. group is once the child's born, they're done. Well, they don't want to yeah, pay taxes yeah, yeah. to the help pro -life? With, Right. Yeah, where's the pro-life? Right. They're pro-birth. They're pro-forced birth. Yeah. They don't want to pay taxes to help um, feed the child, clothe the child, house the child, put the child through school. Yeah. They would just prefer that a mother yeah. that cannot afford a child or, you know, doesn't exactly. want a child uh, but can't afford a child they want to force them into that financial bondage. Mm -hmm. And then who suffers? The child. Or right. they like to, I, this is one of my favorites, well, don't spread your legs. I'm sorry. Why are we using children as punishment? Exactly. Yeah. They are not punishment. Not. Every child that is born should be considered wanted and loved. Exactly. Not a form or not a tool to punish women for taking control mm -hmm, mm -hmm. over their reproduction. Or having a sex life, there is nothing, in, you know, inherently bad about having sex. It's natural. It happens. Accidents happen. We've got to focus on comprehensive sex education, uh -huh, because uh -huh. now in our schools, well, it's abortion or it's um, abstinence only, and these kids don't even that's know. That's why I was so lucky in my time to have teachers right. who gave sex education. I'm 36. And I uh, had comprehensive sex ed. What's, I, what's going on with these kids now? They're but I, I just think it's unfortunate because it was an exceedingly useful yes. to me. And it, it, it was realistic, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, and it Hel helped me to come. And furthermore, it helped me to see, and I make a case for the, the teacher argued against premarital sex, mm -hmm. and her argument was this. It's so much fun that it's going to cloud the rest of your thinking and you'll marry on that basis, and that's a, that's dumb. That's, what's, that's, actually, that's a good argument. I, I'm not for that, the wait and say you're married thing, but that's kind of, that's amusing that you're going to get married just because sex clouded your judgment, which when you're talking about teenagers, hormones are crazy. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, because if you're going to build a marriage mm -hmm. on the, on that. You have no. You don't have a marriage. No. Yeah, you you, you, you just, built your house you're, upon you're the sand. You're going to the circus. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and. With uh, the states and the areas that have gone to abstinence-only sex education, their teen STD rates are higher. Their teen pregnancy <coughs> rates are higher. Their abortion rates are actually higher. Um, more children in foster care, more unwanted children. But if you take this one simple thing and teach comprehensive sex education and offer birth control, mm -hmm. all those numbers drop. Well, all see, of them. See, abortion this, this rates drop. this teacher I had taught about birth control. Now, she did teach about no, no sex before marriage, but she also taught birth control mm -hmm. and what, what it was. Mm -hmm. Now, we got a phone call. Let's see what we got. Go ahead. Hello. Go, good and loud. Let's hear you. Go ahead. Hi. Well, I just wanted to say that um, it's like if, uh -huh. if, the, if the fetus, if the fetus is is a tenant and I'm the landlord. Uh-huh. I have the right to evict. Yes. Uh-huh. 
that's kind of it. Yeah. And that, that goes into the bodily autonomy. Uh, we get to decide what happens with our bodies yeah. and, and what we house in them. That's right. If, if women aren't going to be allowed to have abortions, then the fathers of people who need a kidney should be having to give the child a kidney to mm -hmm. save the life because they're pro-life, right? Right. Absolutely. I, I remember arguing against or with a guy once on this, and uh, I said, you know, I've got a solution in your case, vasectomy. Simple. There, are, uh, every time the word vasectomy comes up, I swear men run crying. But I asked the like doctor Like it's the most one. terrifying thing in the world. I said to the doctor, if you have a vasectomy, how long is, does it take to recover? He said, oh, you've got to have at least a day. My ex-husband <laughs> tried to go back to work the very next day. Well, they're also reversible, right? Well, Pretty course, easily reversible. Yeah. Technically, they're considered not reversible, but they are less invasive and historically shown to be more reversible than when a woman has a tubal. Yeah, and that, mind you, they don't have to, it, it's a local anesthetic. They mm -hmm. don't have to go under. It's in and out where I just got my tubal done last March. And mm -hmm. I had to have a friend pick me up before the sun came up, take me in there, go under anesthesia, have all this invasive surgery done, come out, throw it up from the anesthesia, go home. Mm -hmm. I'm all like, they blow you out with gas and I'm just bloated for days. That was on a Friday, went back to work on Monday and had to wear sweatpants to work because all the uh -huh. gas from just blowing out my abdomen had not gone down yet. Wow. But a man, it, it wants to argue that a vasectomy is, no, don't get close to my stuff. Uh, Meanwhile, we go through. <laughs> That's pathetic. We go through days worth of recovery, having to go completely under. You know, it, it's no, it's, it's ridiculous. It, it just goes back to. It is kind of funny though. We're being considered property, and that's not. Yeah, that's no, not okay. No, no, no. It's got. We got to get over that idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. This is my home, and if I have a tenant, I have the right to evict them. If I don't choose for them to be in there. But I think we've tried to make a case that is, uh, the seed <laughs> is not a flower. <laughs> right. And the fetus is not a full-blown person yet. It's mm -hmm. not even a person yet. It the takes... acorn is not the tree. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, caller. Uh, we do have to close the show. Uh -huh. uh, we're coming to the end of that, that quick we? 55 so minutes. People were worried you and I were going to gonna argue and fight. <laughs> start <laughs> wrapping things up. Get it out. is. Thank you so much, caller. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So get out your pen and paper, if you will. It's been a free thought forum, a program by the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rationalists of East Tennessee. And you can give us feedback, or feedback um, by calling 865-272-9060 and leaving a voice message. Again, that's 865-272-9060 or at freethoughtforum at yahoo.com. We also have a Facebook page, Free Thought Forum Knoxville. Okay, and we are on Tuesday at 5 o'clock, Eastern Time of, in Knoxville, ctvknox.org. Mm -hmm. We would like to thank uh, Riv today for being our technical support. Uh, Sam was also in the room with us. Uh -huh. And the staff at CTV Knox and all of our viewers and callers at home. Thank you. Okay, and uh, the nuns in, in these surveys are those who identify with no religion are the fastest growing religious group in America. Right here in East Tennessee, the Atheist Society of Knoxville and the Rational of East Tennessee are places you can find fellowship and fun. And our view is if you believe in God or You're not alone.